You're looking at Hutton Arena on the campus of Hamlin University in St. Paul as Prep 45 and TSB Television continue their coverage of the Pat Patterson Thanksgiving Tip-Off Tournament. I'm Mike Peden and I'll be presenting this game as we start Pool C play between two powerhouses. The Eastview Lightning and the De La Salle Islanders. De La Salle, the two-time defending state champions in Class 3A. Eastview reaching the semifinals last year and a perennial state tournament participant. Now, in alternating order, here are your game starters. Before we break down the matchup further, here is the starting lineup. We'll start with Eastview. Number five, Michaela Wilson, she's a 5'7 senior. Number 21, Tyra Johnson, a 6'1 senior. Number 22, Madison Giebert, the only returning starter on Eastview's roster. She's a 5'8 sophomore, will run the point guard slot. Carrie Opat, 5'10 junior. And Hannah Matoxin, 5'11 sophomore. De La Salle, familiar names if you've followed our coverage in the past. Alina Starr, number three. She's a guard. She's heading to Auburn. Number 10, Joy Jones, a senior guard. Number 15, Natalie Yule, the senior center. Number 22, Tyshawna Johnson, senior forward. She's going to Iowa State. Number 25, Taylor Tony, sophomore forward. So a senior heavy lineup on De La Salle's roster. And uh, this may be the last significant opportunity, at least for some time, for De La Salle to make another state tournament appearance, but when you have a coach as talented as Faye Johnson Patterson, who has won seven titles overall, five with Minneapolis North, two with De La Salle, nothing is ever ruled out. Eastview. It's been a few years now since they made their transition. Paul Gates used to be the head coach, but then he handed those duties over to Melissa Giebert. Still helps run the team as an assistant. Let's take a quick look at the keys to the game. For Eastview, two simple ones, discipline. They had a sloppy first half, even though they defeated Providence Academy in yesterday's action. But if they have that, if they have that again, in the words of Melissa Giebert, the head coach, De La Salle will run the table and open looks. They cannot allow De La Salle to get open looks, especially with Tyshana Johnson, who had a big performance. We'll talk about that in a second. De La Salle's keys, primarily defense and rebounding. But getting consistency out of their big stars. Tyshana Johnson had 37 points and yesterday's loss to Bloomington Kennedy, 82-76. But how did that happen? For a period of two minutes and 13 seconds in the second half, De La Salle did not score, while Kennedy answered with a 12-0 run. And that was enough to make the difference, which led to another De La Salle loss, but it was against a high caliber 4A team. Now that's a look at our keys to the game for you. And we want to remind you, if you wish to order a DVD copy of this in any game we cover this season, just click the Buy DVD link on the Prep 45 page, and the folks at GrandStadium.tv will take care of the rest. Players to watch on... Players to watch on Eastview's end, Madison Giebert, she may be a sophomore, but don't let her youth dispel you. Very solid, very poised. She had 19 points in yesterday's victory over Providence. And a team that plays methodical the way Providence does, always tough because you never know how those games will turn out. So, strong effort. De La Salle will wear the black jerseys. Eastview wearing the whites. And we begin action. Eastview with the first possession. Eastview got, reached the semifinals last year in the 4A state tournament, but of course that was the year of Hopkins, so... It's pretty much a case of <laughs> everyone else playing for second, it seemed. Good eye by Tyshana Johnson to bounce it off an Eastview player as she was sailing out of bounds. De La Salle still wearing the 
BMC patches on their jerseys. That, of course, stands for Brother Michael Collins. He died last year. And that actually forced De La Salle to cancel a game. They had scheduled with Eden Prairie. They rescheduled it this year as Alina Starr is fouled by Hannah Matoxin. De La Salle was planning to play Eden Prairie, but had to cancel it because that was the day of uh, memorial for Brother Michael Collins, the De La Salle president. Star missing her first free throw. Both teams, though, loaded with really deep rosters. And Lena Starr is one of them. Those high school fans have followed the duo, Starr and Tyshana Johnson, over the years. They joined the varsity program as eighth graders playing for Minneapolis North. There's Gieber for three. Yes! She is a player to watch, and so is Johnson. Gebert, if you are wondering, yes, is the daughter of head coach Melissa Gebert. Tony with the steal. De La Salle couldn't get much support outside of Johnson. That's not something they're too concerned about at the coaching staff if one of their players has a monstrous game like Johnson did and the others are in the shadows metaphorically, but that was one of, the, one of those things that that changed. Maybe a different story. Johnson, though, too high in the scoop. Eastview. A perennial contender, but kind of in the shadows as well. Tyra Johnson can't get the bank, gets her own rebound, and cleans up her own mess. Reason being, they're in the same conference as Lakeville North, and they have been before and after the realignment from Lake to South Suburban. And Lakeville North and Bloomington Kennedy also in that conference. Such strong schools that you almost forget about Eastview being there, and particularly because they don't have a state tournament title. De La Salle commits a traveling violation. For De La Salle fans, and for those of you following the Tri-Metro, you'll see more another Tri-Metro school in Providence later, there will be a new format that everyone will be adapting to in this experimental run. And that is a conference tournament. The Tri-Metro has been split in two divisions for several years. Well, Pat's in trouble. We'll find Skeeber top of the key. Yes! ECU on an 8-1 lead, and Ty er, Faith Johnson-Patterson will call timeout to settle down her Islanders. So to finish up that last point, Tri-Metro has split in two divisions. It has been for several years. Heavily tilted on one side for the last few. You had Minnehaha Academy, they won state in 2010, went to the finals in 2011, and uh, came, made another appearance in surprising fashion in 2012. De La Salle, we mentioned, won the last two state tournament titles, came in third in 2010. And Providence Academy, a state participant in 2011, reaching the semifinal round, and then winning state in 2012, making quick work of Sauk Center. So they're going to seat up all the schools and have a conference tournament. Why? I'm not sure. 
Of course, in high school, usually conference tournaments are not recognized with the same level of respect as state tournaments, just the way the high school format is structured, but it should make for an interesting scenario among the schools. Having the West and East schools play for a champion. East who does not have this, will not have this experiment. And Alina Starr, the only player to score for De La Salle thus far, gets in a layup. Eight to three. Basketball runs in her family. She's the younger sister of Larea Starr, who is a considerable asset for Minneapolis North in their last dynasty, if you will, or their second dynasty, winning three straight titles from 03 through 05. Larea Starr was part of the first wave. No surprise that Faith Johnson Patterson was able to get Alina to play with her. Foul on Tyra Johnson from Eastview. And it's eight to three. Still. And Eastview with a senior heavy lineup. But when you look at their starters, we have a steal, fast break, no basket though from Hannah Ruschak. Not as many on the roster this time. You're gonna have a few returning players, like Tyra Johnson who drills the three-pointer. Scoring, limited to three players thus far on either side, but right now it's paying off for Eastview. Star trying to find Johnson, too high. East Two has never won a state tournament title in girls basketball, but their school has become a mecca of athletics in their own right, the same way De La Salle has. Soccer, a perennial state tournament contender. You've got Melissa Berry. 13-3, who would have thought this? Between a battle of 3A and 4A perennials. The football team did quite well this year. Both the girls and boys teams made state last year. Eastview boys lost a heartbreaker to Eden Prairie. All the girls, as you mentioned, went to the semifinals. Barry, too strong. And Star's gonna be called for the push. Rush check to inbound. Finding Matoxin. Gieber for three. Bullseye. Palming on De La Salle. And Faye Johnson Patterson has to call another timeout here. 16 3 is the margin now. As much as we talk about De La Salle and their dominance, it's not an easy task to put together the run they have. You, know, you run into road bumps, and interestingly, De La Salle could preserve a balance of unusual sorts. As the last couple of years, they lost their opening round. This is since Faith Johnson Patterson took over. They lost the first game of the year, which was at this event last year, and then uh, in both years and they won the state title. 2010, their first game of the year was the breakdown tip-off classic. They defeated St. Paul Central in that contest, ended up losing in the semifinal round of the state tournament, settled for third. And to the bewilderment of the De La Salle coaching staff, their fans and parents were not happy. In fact, were very disappointed.
Catch, release, off the heel though from Johnson. Metoxin offensive rebound. No put back from Rush Check. But Eastview will get another chance. And there's Gebert, heat check. And she's going a little cold. Tyshawna Johnson with the board. As we mentioned in the open, heading to Iowa State. No good there. Taylor Tony draws the foul. Tony had 13 points uh, yesterday. 21. In the 13. loss to Bloomington Kennedy. And as strong as De La Salle is, you, the rust seems to show on them a little more in those first few games of the year than in other teams, but they always find a way to claw back and establish themselves as the favorite. Although ironically, when they won last year, they were the number three seed. Richfield got number one. And it may have had to do with the scheduling that De La Salle put together, playing a lot of 4A schools to prep for such a tournament run, but there was no question who the favorite was. No question who's on top here. It's Eastview, 18-3, rush check with the swish. <laughs> and the game is Azalee Sellers, number 14 for the Islanders. Also, number 32. And there's the connection we've been waiting for. Star to Johnson. I mentioned those two have played together since eighth grade. Done a lot together, and until next, they will be teammates for the final time this year, unless they happen to play in the same WNBA team down the road. Or if one of them can convince the other to switch colleges. I highly doubt that. ECU on transition, Metoxin pull up. Yes! She blink goes it in. Tony in a hole, draws a foul. Tony bricked her first two free throw attempts. Not a good showing thus far, one of four. Eastview again on the run. It's rush check. This is turning one-sided in a hurry. Alina Starr, no, but didn't have a great angle there. Picked up by rush check. Needs to be located in Apple Valley, by the way. They maintain possession and, again, strong years, strong performances. Just, no, well, they don't have that hardware to show for it. A huge crop of talented athletes, but you don't have the kind of accolades that De La Salle does or even your conference brethren. Well, sometimes you get passed over. But certainly plenty of reason to respect them. Missing the three-pointer was Kerry Opatz and De La Salle maybe can get the stop they need. We talked about in the open, they had a 12-0 run against Kennedy that cost them in a six-point loss. Johnson, deep three, short. Johnson does go outside on occasion. Opatz inside and getting the bank is Melissa Berry again. Eastview playing that same kind of tempo that De La Salle does. And right now, Eastview is winning this game. The discipline's certainly there. 
Amanda Klein scoring for the Islanders. 24-8 though. Traveling violation on Eastview, one of the few miscues we've seen from the Lightning thus far. Michaela Wilson going in, one of the senior captains for the Lightning. This time, but nobody boxing out De La Salle. They do get the rebound, but Eastview near laps there and interior defense in the game for the Islanders. Tiana Young, 13, lining up the three off target from Eastview, and it will roll over to, in the hands of Johnson. Johnson, the niece of Faith Patterson, Faith Johnson Patterson, star off target as well, but De La Salle saves it. Johnson on the drive, in and out. Gets her own rebound and a putback. And now Melissa Giebert will call timeout. She's still up by 14, but knows how threatening De La Salle can be at any time. And speaking of De La Salle, they may have struggled now, but the last few years, what Faith Johnson Patterson has done for the program was give them some respect. They were always a state title contender beforehand. Brian Fry was the head coach. He had experience at the University of Minnesota, but never could get De La Salle past the hump. They would get to the semifinals, the finals, whatever round. They just never could finish the deal until Faye Johnson Patterson stepped in. She took the De La Salle job as a matter of a job security because of the state of flux over at Minneapolis North, which she called home for many years, coaching there from 98 through 2009. And continuing her legacy, already a Coaches Association Hall of Fame member. Kyle called before the shot. Star, who's inbounding, full name is Alina, usually on the programs identified as Lena because of mispronunciations. And she gets a quick feed to Johnson who gets the short range jumper. People cannot get the pronunciation of her full name down, which shares the name with a certain medical thing. And Madison Giebert. Flashing the lights. 12 points, all three pointers. Star loses the ball. Ebert, double team, gets out of it. De La Salle pressing, but now they may leave Eastview open on the other end. No, they get back in time. To... Foul on De La Salle. One of Eastview's traditions, one of, the assist one of the assistants on the squad, actually one of the student managers, uh, has a uh, medical condition, so he's about as tall as infants, but well-respected, well-loved among the Eastview roster, and one of the traditions they do in practice, as launching the two off target, was McCoxon, is the, during practice, the entire team, when they perform their court-to-court uh, -court runs, the baseline runs, they will circle around and touch his head as a show of support. There's a lot of multi-sport athletes in Eastview over the years and a lot of talent 
at different levels from Brittany McSparren who played Division I basketball at Drake. When East View got to the state semis in 2008, lost to St. Paul Central that year. Johnson, long two, missed again. Missing her form from yesterday when she put down 37. Yeah, Jenna Doctors, she's playing at St. Thomas. And off the mark is Barry, scramble for the ball. It goes to Giebert and she backs off, six minutes to go. See the Hopkins coaching staff in attendance taking an eye of this game. I guess one advantage of not playing in this tournament anymore. You can actually watch a game or two. Of course, their group last week helped out in the state football tournament, running the chains. Back to action here. Johnson with the deflection. Jenna Doctor, you had the Beckman twins, Alex and Amanda Beckman. Amber Mayer was another one. A lot of talent for Eastview, and that's why they continue to be a ranked school in this class. Eastview now slowing down the ball, and they find Matoxin open for a mid range J. Johnson. Wow. The Toxin one on one with Starr. Breaks loose. And Gieber can get deuces as well. Gieber with 14. De La Salle was up several times yesterday over Kennedy before falling off. And here you think Gieber will be running a clinic. They're close to doing that. As we talked about in the last game with the LaSalle and really any team in 3A, Metoxin again. Wow, 33-12. I certainly didn't expect this. But the 3A field is usually a little more open. Now, these losses, well, I shouldn't say the loss, it's far from over yet, but with De La Salle, you look at these games and you wonder what's going on. Remember, these are against 4A opponents. This has no bearing on their state tournament prospects in their class 3A. And as we've seen many times over, as Johnson gets another putback, even if they get spanked, these 4A competitions help them out in the 3A tournament because they know what it's like to play against the top teams. Wow, Eastview had another fast break look but Opatz could not handle the ball and she loses it. And again, you don't want to give De La Salle any kind of momentum. That much is clear. Star, pull up, swish. That's good for Tree. Star for triple. Opatz cannot answer. And Tony with the board. Starr had a phenomenal game a year ago, or earlier, I should say last spring, against Richfield to lead her team to victory, traveling violation on Klein. Heavy heart for Starr, though. She lost both of her, she lost her grandmother and her great-grandmother around that time. Two people she considered role models. And adversity has been challenging De La Salle for several years now in the midst of their state tournament runs. We're gonna have a foul in Alina Starr. We'll talk more about that a little later. De La Salle had plenty to give. 
which is of some consolation at this point because the last thing you want is to have that kind of situation unfold. Gevert over to Barry. Two and a half to go. In E2, they've dealt with some as well. Of course, they had to play a Sear without one of their Beckman twins, Amanda, who suffered an ACL tear. In the game for the Lightning, number three, Amy Udo. And she steps on the line. That gives De La Salle the ball back. At halftime, we will have Kerry Stockwell, the head coach of Hamlin, say a few words. Can't talk about the high school players, of course, but Hamlin being the host of this tournament. Get sense some publicity. Tony intended for Johnson. Ill-advised throw, though. And that's going to give Eastview a chance, but they can't do anything with it either. Star one-on-one -on -one with Gebert. Point guard against point guard, and Star is going to get a pair. Eastview is in the bonus anyway. I should say De La Salle was in the bonus, as it was. Star just five points. It's really struggled this first weekend. We mentioned in the open going to Auburn University, had verbal Georgetown, but a coaching change redirected her course and chose Auburn, which is a fine school in its own right. They gave or the alma mater of Phoenix Mercury forward, Dewana Bonner, who has had an amazing career with the Mercury. Missing the three-pointer was number 10, Megan Baim. The star looking forward to playing down in Auburn, looking forward to playing down south, where she won't have to deal with cold weather, although the last few years, uh, last couple of years, there hasn't been much cold weather to worry about. But that's another discussion. 33-18. Eastview was up by a bunch, and they still are. Tony off target. But break, and breaking up the pass is KB Remberg for De La Salle. Alina Starr is open for the finish. Star with nine points. And Melissa Gebert will call 30 second timeout here to figure out what's going on as De La Salle there. Still a little frazzled, but they have dialed down the margin somewhat. Instead of a 20 point deficit, we're looking at a 13 point margin. De La Salle adversity we mentioned a couple years ago they lost Maya Lloyd to an ACL tear around that same time Tyshana's younger brother Jarvis suffered a heart attack nearly died fortunately that did not happen Tyshana took a couple games off had a phenomenal game against Minnetonka in the tip-off classic that year they came back won the title but then had more problems Faye Johnson Patterson had a medical emergency, and on top of that, got caught up in a tornado that hit North Minneapolis a couple years ago. Last year, as we mentioned, they had to go through the passing of Brother Michael Collins, who you know, certainly struck a chord with the staff when I talked to them about it. They had a serious injury with Mariah Adonine, suffered a concussion, and still won the state title. Johnson's going to get called for the reach-in foul. De La Salle had three to give. 
So in terms of dra drama, ECU not having to experience that, at least not to that degree. Not that you ever wish it. Perseverance has been a primary theme though for De La Salle and for Eastview, they're looking to get there. Amy Udo, yes. And they're going to stop the clock because of a delay of game somewhat. In fact, the officials are gonna have a discussion one of the photographers had to get the ball, which took up some time. And so normally the clock does not stop for a basket, but it doesn't take that long for an inbound play either. So they will reset the clock to 11.8. This is not a common occurrence you see in high school basketball. Again, they use a running clock after a made basket. Plenty of time though for De La Salle to draw up a play. Alina Starr with defenders in her face converging on her position. She gets the runner to end the first half and maybe a little momentum for the Islanders. They need it badly. Eastview smoldering. After a strong first half run, they lead 35-22. We'll pause for a few minutes. We hope to have Kerry Stockwell join us. If not, uh, well, we'll adapt as we always do. You're watching the Pat Patterson Thanksgiving tip-off tournament right here on Prep45.com. And we're back, and we have Kerry Stockwell, the head coach of Hamlin's women's basketball team, with us. And uh, what would you make of this uh, two-day event so far? I think it's been a great event. You know, I think for the teams, um, they love coming here to play. Um, coaches talk about how they want their kids to experience playing at a place where first ever college basketball game took place. So there's a lot of history here. And uh, just from the crowds and, um, you know, the games competition, it's been a great event. And one of the differences, there isn't the championship bracket per se, kind of a round robin where everybody's playing two games. Uh, what led to that? And what have you noticed by having this kind of format as opposed to a playing game the pre previous few years? Well, you know, truthfully, it, it, we had, you know, teams that were interested in playing and um, we ended up with, you know, four teams from the same conference. We wanted to make sure they wouldn't have to play each other. That was the number one priority and really the only way to make sure that didn't happen was to do more of a classic format. I think the players, uh, coaches like that too, they know when they're going to play the next day uh, and they know their opponent as well. So it's worked out well overall. Talk about the event's growth. A few years ago, before you came in, this was just a four-team event, and then it quickly morphed to a 12-team event that now spans the entire uh, length of two days, I know, which can sometimes overlap with practices, but what does that say about the quality of this event? Well, I, I think it just says, you know, in terms of the event to open up their season, um, and it's an exciting time, like I said, the venue itself, see where teams are at. Um, you know, and, and just the interest of being able to play, you know, hopefully maybe some teams that typically some of these teams wouldn't play and other times it's playing teams that, you know, showcase some, some teams that have had some really high success. And where would you like to see this event go if there's any more room for growth? <laughs> I don't know if we can grow anymore. We did add, you know, JV portion of the tournament, um, you know, so there's a possibility of, of growing in that direction. But, uh, I, you know, this year I really like the format. I um, think coaches have appreciated it. And, you know, we just want to run a quality, high quality tournament and have a great experience for the teams that participate. Kerry Stockwell, thank you very much. And uh, good luck to you as uh, you uh, embark on your uh, next season of Hamlin basketball. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Kerry Stockwell of Hamlin. And perfect timing, of course, because we're just about ready to start the second half between Eastview and De La Salle of the Pat Patterson tip-off tournament. I'm Mike Peden, and let's take a look at the numbers. Well, pretty one-sided with Eastview leading 35-22. Madison Giebert leading all players with 14 points. They'll, um, a little more balanced too. Hannah Matoxen has a six points. Melissa Berry has four. Hannah Rutschek also has four. De La Salle, not much. There's Alina Starr who's going to get a call for the traveling violation. She has 11 points. 
Johnson has eight, and that really is it. I mean, Klein's got a pair, but in terms of major contributions, it's really been a two-player team. Between Johnson and Starr, and they're not doing enough. Double dribble violation on Melissa Berry. So now we have the official explanation too on why this became a classic round robin format. Teams in the same conferences. Johnson for three. Swish. We mentioned that in the first half. She is a strong inside player, but will occasionally go to the outside. A lot of forwards do that though, and at her size, five foot ten, you know, I don't expect her to be a power forward at Iowa State. Big 12 member. Probably more of a wing. Foul on De La Salle. That sends Metoxin to the line. Interestingly, this is the first trip that ECU has made to the free throw line. And Metoxin makes both. Now De La Salle has to remind themselves it's not over. We mentioned the keys to the game. Rebounding and defense. So defense certainly <laughs> was lacking in the last one, as you saw Starr put down the basket, I believe. Johnson, Tyra Johnson in trouble, but she gets out of it, finds Barry, and Metoxin is open. And that's the worst kind of foul to make if you're De La Salle. But the East Two fans right in front of me don't mind. Natalie Ewell hacked Metoxin as she found her way open. And now Metoxin has a chance for a three-point play, which she completes. That gives her 11, and ECU up by 13. Game not over, though, and with the teams as fast-paced as these two, it will not take long to put together a run. Taylor Tony with her first field goal. Uh-oh. Bullseye, Madison Giebert again. The three-point specialist for Eastview. Alina Starr in traffic, gets the bank. Forty-three, thirty-one in favor of the Lightning. Johnson fouled, she'll go to the line. Tyra Johnson with five points, this is her first trip. Blitz it. Alina Starr racing through again. And the guard is finding her groove now. Eastview loses it in traffic. And uh, kind of a silly foul there on Michaela Wilson hacking Johnson in the backcourt. As we said, this game not over by any means, even though Eastview went up considerably. Both teams are too talented to let any kind of deficit slap them in the face. Start of Johnson. Uh, not quite the angle. Johnson hacked.
Free throws coming for Taishana. Goes by Shana, but there aren't too many with her name regardless. I mentioned going to Iowa State. The Big 12 member, Johnson Bricks, the front end. Here's how many schools they have. Remains to be seen because they keep realigning in Division I. It's going to be a reach and foul, I believe, on Tony as Johnson Brick both. Unofficially, Johnson with 11 points and Alina Starr with 17. A reversal of yesterday of sorts. Johnson with Yule defending, no pressure. Tyra Johnson with eight. Alina Starr well, in traffic there. Metoxin came up with the block. And here comes Isu on the fast break, but they can't haul it in. And it's picked up by Joy Jones. We haven't mentioned her name much. 46-33. Johnson pulls up. Can't get it this time. Scramble. Goes to Eastview. Tyra Johnson. Rush check. Metoxen out to Giebert. Lines up the three. Missed that time. Rebound Star. Star looking for Tony. Founder. Touchdown. Eastview on the run. Johnson. Oh, I thought she was going to shoot for three. That's all right. Eastview will reset. Plenty of time. 46-35. De La Salle unable to close in that gap, though. And that's not going to get it done. Good job, though, by Hannah Metoxen. He was having a phenomenal game of her own. In for De La Salle is Cameron Spies, number 23. Their names, not among the most common. When Metoxen, a perfect 4-4, four four, and has 14 points. Tyshana Johnson left alone, but didn't have the angle again. It has, to, it has eluded her at times. 13-39. And as wings, you know, when you have that ability to get inside the way Johnson does. You can be a little aggressive, but sometimes you don't always get the right angles. Gebert, fast break, and she'll draw the foul on Yule. This will be Giebert's first trip to the free throw line. Giebert, the coach's daughter, what a game, 17 points. And climbing. Nineteen now. Jump ball is called. Eastview had the possession arrow. De La Salle was lucky they didn't get hit with another foul. They're out of fouls to give. Again, kind of playing a half step behind on defense. But this time, Yule was set, and she picks up the offensive foul. I should say draws it. On Melissa Berry. 
But again, the Islanders down by 16. Star, another tough shot. This time it goes in. Johnson. De La Salle on the penalty now, and that's not good news in their odds for victory. At the line is Kerry Opatz, who finally gets on the board. Well, she doesn't want to be left out of this parade. Eastview very accurate from the free throw line. Star, well, in and out. Metoxin with the rebound. And she finds Giebert. That's going to leave Opatz open, and not much De La Salle could do there. De La Salle, at, especially in the first weekend of the year, they get these tough opponents, and they have frequently struggled against Class 4A schools. But they do this not to inflate wins, but to train for March. As the Islanders figure to be in the mix for the state title. Favorites to win a third straight year, not easily, but right now, their defense out of sync. That foul is on Spies. That's going to send Christy Seberg to the line. In a game that's slipping out of De La Salle's grasp in a hurry. And Eastview went on that big run, though, to start the first half, and De La Salle was struggling to find their shots, and that's really what made the difference, has made the difference thus far. No putback for Eastview, and they stepped on the line. A rare miss, though, from the free throw line by Seberg. And how rare is it for Eastview? Well, they didn't make any trips until late in the first half. Eastview 10 of 12 from the charity stripe. De La Salle, uh, not even close in terms of accuracy. As Ailey Sellers passes off target, and that's another reason, that's another reason why some folks say even if De La Salle's the favorite, it's gonna be a little tougher because they lost solid anchors in Maya Lloyd and Mariah Adonine to graduation. Tyra Johnson with the bank. And so De La Salle certainly has a crux of talented players, but they've got a little more soul searching to do. Faye Johnson Patterson will continue that search. She calls timeout with 11.08. Remaining in the second half. We wish to remind you, if you want to order a DVD copy of this game, you can click the buy DVD link and prep 45 and the folks at grandstadium.tv will take care of the rest and that goes for all the games that we bring to you this season. This tournament of course named for Pat Patterson, the Rosa Parks of women's sports as an old Hamlin graduate put it. Her estate gave a grant that allowed the athletic renovation and expansion of their fields. They were named in her honor as a result. And they also named the tournament in her honor. It's been going on for 13 years now. Of course, we talked about it in our quick chat with Kerry Stockwell. What used to be a four-team event, now a 12-team marathon. And that has expanded to the JV bracket.
So the kids who would normally be bench warmers get a chance to play. That's always a good sign. Johnson, little space, swish. Didn't have much room to work with there. 58-39. We're seeing some aggressive man-to-man -man play here. Lining up the three and coming up short was rush check. Bounces off De La Salle, it stays with Eastview. Wilson and Eastview now killing some clock here. They can afford to do that, having a 19-point lead. De La Salle has to run. And that's likely going to be the combination they go with. And we've got a foul right after the basket. Ill-advised foul there on Hazeli Sellers because, again, De La Salle is in the penalties. So that's going to kill some momentum they may have achieved. And you've got Giebert at the line who hasn't had to push as hard as she did in the first go round. But still piling on the points. Her first miss from the charity stripe. Star, no. But Eastview staying with her, kind of sensing that De La Salle is going to push and push quick. There's a downside to that. But Metoxen unable to get the layup. Johnson going to Star deep. Star in trouble. How did she pull that off? It's Star's turn to have the big game for De La Salle, but similar to yesterday with Kennedy, they're not getting enough support. Tyshawna Johnson drew the foul, and that may have done more harm than good because Ellen Leahy was there for the putback opportunity, and you saw it went in now, of course, Play kind of stopped after that point, but as I always say, though, you make them earn it from the free throw line. You never want to give up an uncontested layup. <laughs> and that's why Johnson. Not finding it for the free throw line here. Giebert under pressure from Leahy, but she's just too quick, and Giebert's going to get two free throws. Deal us out in the double bonus now, or Eastview in the double bonus. Now in Eastview's case, I mean, they play in 4A, where 
People have called it the era of Hopkins, as strong as they are, but the play from Giebert is certainly should draw some eyeballs and perhaps make Eastview look like a contender. They're certainly taking the defending 3A state champion to task. This is turning into a runaway here. Star pleading her case to the official. The and the frustration just building on De La Salle's end as you've got a killer point guard tonight in Madison Gieber. Tyshawna Johnson with the quick basket. Still some time for a De La Salle run, but they're running out of time. And the defense has been absolutely porous. Ruschek gets in on the action. She now has six. Ooh, Sellers in trouble and she threw it right into the hands of Johnson. And beating the coverage and getting the bank is Melissa Berry and Eastview making a statement here. Johnson for three, bullseye. De La Salle, the scoring limited to two players. Eastview spreading the ball around and as Eastview can hang on as it looks like they will, this will be a huge statement, not just for them, but to all the other 4A schools watching that Eastview is ready to play and ready to follow up on that semifinal appearance last year. Tyshana Johnson with the steal. Goodbye. Good individual games from the two D1 recruits on De La Salle, but as we talked about, support lacking. Tony's the only, Tony and Klein are the only other players to score for De La Salle. Eastview getting a lot of movement around. And it's just too much. But why do I say it's a big statement? When you look at this weekend, Eastview will have defeated. Star drains a triple. And not just defeated, pulverized. Two of the defending state champions in the same weekend, Providence Academy and De La Salle. Again, those two schools don't always have the best starts, but they have the best finishes. Timeout, 6.13 to go. ECU up 70 to 54. Let's take a look at this support unit. We talked about Eastview, Madison Giebert led the way yesterday with 19, doing so again here. Twenty-five points. Tyra Johnson has twelve. And Hannah Matoxin has 14. That just gives you an idea. They've had more than one player. I hope those ECU coaches don't catch it, don't catch uh, your. I hope those ECU coaches don't catch the uh, face that uh, this one student made right in front of the camera. Trying to video bomb the coach's film. I see that. We resume action here, 6.13 to go. We have one more game and that will conclude our evening. After this. And that's Bloomington Kennedy and Providence Academy.
Rajchek was looking for Barry. Does find her after a bit of a skir uh, skirmish. And a pickpocket and steal by number two. We don't have her name on the program. Carrying violation on De La Salle. De La Salle just about full with their roster. Of course, this being the first weekend, they bring a big group. Foul on Johnson, and that's going to send Matox into the line, who has made all four of her free throw attempts. Hopkins will still be the favorite in class for it. We've going back to our previous discussion, but you cannot simply discard what Eastview has done in its first weekend. And, and you know, they had some questions too. Johnson, not able to hit the three-pointer. They had some questions of their own. You now only one returning starter on the team, although the rest of their starters did play last year as reserves, so it wasn't like a heat. There wasn't a giant shakeup on the roster, but you know you lose some of your you lose some anchors, you lose some of that identity. Of course, it happens all the time in high school, but you you consider you know what was Eastview facing? But Gebert continuing the tradition that Paul Gates started. Johnson fouls Gebert. And that's going to send the emerging point guard, Madison Giebert, to the line. She played very well last year as a freshman. And there was no animosity. There never is. But you know, nobody playing favorites. I mean, they, Giebert, well-respected on the team. Age, simply a number. How about this for numbers? Oh my goodness. Gebert just piling it on now, 27 points. Eastview had a couple of fouls to give. It's official, Madison Gebert has arrived, if she hadn't already. And for De La Salle, and th this is again going to be a challenge. Again, they don't have the anchors they once did to lead the team in previous t years. They're going to need to find players to step up for them. Isu turns it over because as we've seen in yesterday's game with Kennedy and in today's match with Eastview, Alina Starr and Tyshana Johnson cannot get De La Salle to another state title on their own. They're great players, but you need more than two. Two might be good enough to get you into the playoffs, maybe even a state tournament appearance, but you need Eastview uses up their last foul to give. You need all five or some reliable options outside to extend it, those chances. And again, though, De La Salle will turn things around. And how about that from Tyshana Johnson? Jump ball, De La Salle with possession. Didn't see any one open, so she tried to bounce it off the back of an ECU player but couldn't get there in time and a jump ball is called.
But whatever happens. You can't take too much from this game either way. I mean, yes, De La Salle got their butts kicked after a tough loss to Kennedy yesterday, leading and then losing by six on a 12-0 run. But those who have followed this level are too keen on what Faith Johnson Patterson has done. And those watching need to take Eastview seriously. Of course, Eastview will get some tests when they start their conference schedule. They play in the South Suburban League, so they're going to get Lakeville North. They're going to get Kennedy. They've got some good foes down there. Rosemount is another one. Again, Hopkins is the overwhelming favorite again. And Eastview, well, we'll get a barometer when they get a chance to play their 4A brethren. But to take on two defending state champions with two very starkly different styles and to dominate the way they have is a very admirable way to start your weekend. Johnson with her fourth foul. We're in stat padding time now. It's not going to be a thrilling, not going to be a very cheerful weekend, cheerful Sunday for the De La Salle group. They'll have a lot of regrouping to do. You can't make too much, as we mentioned, though, out of a two-game weekend. And, of course, come March, all those games pretty much go out the window. Oh, Giebert, who has 27 points, like she needs any more. But she's happy to oblige. Now about this, 10 of 11 from the free throw line. And that's what's going to make Eastview very dangerous overall. Not only do you have talented players on offense, but if they can continue this kind of performance in the free throw line, you're going to be have, your opponents will have to be very careful about how they take on Eastview. We've seen some teams who don't have those free throw skills down, and that becomes a difference. Free throws do count. Johnson, what they mean, vicious block. Unfortunately, it comes a little too late for De La Salle to do much about it. Reach and foul on Eastview. They're in the penalty, but it's a moot point now. A frustrating game for Johnson. Now, Iowa State a competitive member of the Big 12 and one of the most rabid fan bases around. The Big 12 known for that in women's basketball, so she'll have that to look forward to. In Eastview, what a game. I've run out of thing, I've run out of adjectives to describe Eastview because this has been a thorough buck kicking. Yeah, Giebert with 29. Metoxen, well, she's had a good game too. She has 16. Tyra Johnson has worked her way up. She has 16. 
Let's make it 18. And a timeout will be called, most likely to send in the reserves. It started with a strong first half run by the Lightning and they lived up to their metaphorical lived up to their nickname today. And they're still playing defense. Not letting up. And for Faith Johnson Patterson, this may be one of the biggest defeats that she's had, at least in the early part of a season. But she's gone through many of them. And this will certainly not affect her level of respect against seven state tournament titles. Eastview has yet to win one. Star fouls and a chance for Melissa Berry to pad her numbers. But what made the difference? The numbers I mentioned. Eastview having a trio of players today and getting that kind of support yesterday too. Not as much as this, but again, Providence Academy plays a much slower tempo, so you're not gonna get as many points as Tyshana Johnson steps out. Eastview getting the support that De La Salle will need to find once more. Solid individual game by Starr though, that gives her another tray. And Eastview will run out the clock on an absolutely dominating win. 82-59 the score. And Eastview will start their weekend by taking down two defending state champions, Providence Academy in 2A and De La Salle in 3A. And once again, just to recap the numbers, they're unofficial of course, but Madison Gieber, 29 points to go with her 19 yesterday. Uh, a player to watch for with Eastview as she develops her point guard skills. Tyra Johnson with 18 points. Hannah Matoxin with 16 to lead the Lightning. And unofficially for De La Salle, just three players got on the board, or four players. It felt like three. Alina Starr struggled early and had a good individual game. Thirty-one points unofficially. Tyshana Johnson also had a solid game of her own. Twenty-one points, but that was it. That concludes our first Pool C game. We've got one more for you. It's Providence Academy and Bloomington Kennedy, so stick around. You're watching the Pat Patterson Thanksgiving tip-off tournament here on TSB Television.